Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now and forever. And forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, 
as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. The king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that you, we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my lips and the meditations in all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, be the church, be the change. That's the slogan of our diocesan vision we approved one year ago at special convention. And it's been a long year. In 2020, you no doubt have learned that your call to be the church does not refer to a building made of stone or brick, no matter how beautiful it is. Rather, it's about being a people called by God to live distinctive lives. This reminds me of a wonderful poster stuck over the exit sign in the back of a church that I used to visit. It read simply, the church is leaving the building. Well, that is one good lesson we have learned during this pandemic. And the world needs the church today more than ever. Just take a quick look around at the brokenness, the poverty, the racism, the lack of civility. It's all too close. Clearly, we need something different. Our communities and our nation need something more. And that is exactly what God is doing in and through Christ and his church. As our collect today puts it, God, whose will it is to restore all things in Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But he is a ruler unlike any other. Common sense tells us we need to work our way up the ladder so that we might use our wealth, prestige, and power for good and achieve the best possible results, even if it does require a, a little push now and again. But that's the rub, because eventually the need for violence can always be justified, and we end up in the very same place we started. But God shows his kingly rule 
not through might or power, but in mercy and compassion for his world. Listen to how the prophet Ezekiel describes God in our first reading. God searches and seeks out the lost, brings them together, feeds them and binds up their wounds. God strengthens the weak, brings the outcast home, and comforts the lowly. This is a king of kings who truly cares for his people, a king who uses his power for good. Likewise, St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, calls his readers to reimagine what power looks like. He gives thanks for their faith in Jesus Christ because it has given them a spirit of wisdom and revelation that enables them to know the hope to which they have been called. This spiritual insight, this clear vision, enables believers to inhabit power for the good of the other, rather than for themselves alone, or worse, to abuse and oppress. In today's parable from St. Matthew, Jesus tells us exactly what this new vision of power in the church should look like in practice and the dire consequences of doing the opposite. He says, use your power in service to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to welcome the stranger and clothe the naked. Take care of the sick and visit those who are in prison. This is an all-encompassing, unlimited, all-embracing vision of what it means to be the church, be the change. Of course, we need to be honest and recognize that it is not always easy to respond with such grace for others. The stuff of life easily gets in our way, distracts us, or drives us inwards so that we no longer can see. That is why we so desperately need one another. At my farewell mass in Mozambique, we all gathered in the Cathedral Church of St. Bartholomew. Thousands were present in all the clergy of the diocese. The night before, I had dreamed that God wanted me to sing the Eucharistic prayer like an angel. It was such a vivid dream that I woke up immediately and told my wife, Helen, who looked rather less ecstatic and remarked that I could not carry a tune in a bucket. I acknowledged that truth, but remained persuaded that God was indeed making all things new again. Even as I stood behind the high altar, I was full of confidence. Then, raising my hands in the Oran's position of prayer, I lifted my head to the heaven, and out came the sound of a frog croaking. It was the most horrible, out-of-tune warble ever emitted by a human voice. And I stood trembling, embarrassed, and silent. How could you? Then, a most amazing thing happened. The clergy who had gathered around the altar to concelebrate began to sing. One by one, our voices rang out in prayer, and I joined with them, and together we sang like angels. You see, my dear friends, real change happens when you come together in God's spirit to become the church, Christ's body here on earth. In him, God is doing something completely new and calls you to believe and live by this dream in your service of Christ the King. The church is a people being remade by God's love, poured out into our lives. In response, we live with a distinctive hope 
that demonstrates both what God has done in Jesus and what God is doing in and through you, his people in the world. This is good news. Good news, not good advice. Because God has acted to bring about a new order, not based on the world's view of power, but on the mercy of the one who created and sustains the universe. The basis of our Christian hope is founded on these three things. A good God who made the whole universe. A good God who loves you so much that he will not let you fail. And a good God who will bring justice to this world. Creation, redemption, judgment. Now I know that this is where all good Episcopalians begin to squirm. We're not very keen about sin and judgment. But today's passage shows that it's critical and integral to the good news we proclaim. You see, Jesus gave up his life to destroy sin and the power of death in our lives so that we who were lost and scattered might be brought home. The Christian view of the world is immensely practical. Sin exists and leads us away from God into the arms of another. Every time you seek worth, security, or meaning in something other than God, you spoil your very identity. For if God is not the center of your life, then something else is. Whether it's money or your profession, music or sport, or even a noble and just cause, or your own self-independence. We all believe in something or someone. But when that takes the place of God, we become blind to the good, the true, and the beautiful. And we no longer see the need of the other, just like the wayward group. Judgment, I think, is not so much God's wrath against us, but the consequences of our own rebellious wandering into an accursed wilderness of isolation, loneliness, and despair. Now, God is putting all things right again. If you have eyes to see, there are signs of hope as the reign of God's King comes to earth just as it is in heaven, even though we must yet struggle in the now but not yet time. As we follow in the way of Christ, we are changed. God's Spirit spills out into our lives so that we might care for each other. Provocative, uncalculating, and unobtrusive acts of genuine kindness become the marks of power in this place as we proclaim in word and deed that Jesus Christ is King. You have left the building. You are God's people, called to be the hope of the world. So go and be the church, be the change. Amen. Now together let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Mark, for our presiding Bishop Michael, and for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially all who have died in the coronavirus pandemic. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for this nation as we seek healing, justice, and peace for all those in the medical field treating those who are sick and for all essential workers. I ask your prayers for all in economic suffering and crisis, especially those burdened by medical debt. I ask your thanksgiving for all who share the gifts God has entrusted to them for the good of our community and world. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have 
mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Christ the King, or the Reign of Christ, or about 17 other names that it is known by, but it is the last Sunday in the season after Pentecost. Next Sunday we begin Advent, and please look at our website for several opportunities to keep Advent at home, and we will also have some wonderful opportunities to be the church digitally in Advent. We are so glad to welcome Bishop Mark and his most unusual annual visitation at St. Michael's. Um, so after the service at 11, we will have an online Zoom coffee hour. The link is in this week in this weekend at St. Michael's, or if you don't have it, you can always contact your vestry member to get the link, but we hope that you will join us as Bishop Mark shared information on how even in this time of pandemic, we are continuing to be the church to be the change, to share love, to alleviate suffering, and to be a presence of forgiveness and reconciliation in our communities. So thank you for joining us, thank you for worshiping with us, and thank you for your prayers. I also want to say thank you for your generosity. We kicked off this week, you may have noticed on the news, the Commonwealth Forgiveness Project. St. Michael's is so blessed and so thankful to join the Central Baptist, Temple at Israel, First Presbyterian Church, all of Lexington, and Union Church Berea. And our goal is to raise $35,000, which will purchase at least $3.5 million in medical debt. You can go to our website to make an online donation. You can also simply send a check to the church. Please put medical debt in the memo line so we know to apply it to that. Our goal is to make this season of Advent and Christmas and Hanukkah true holy days by offering to people in Appalachia a letter in the new year that says your debts have been forgiven so that they can begin a new year with hope and with promise and with financial renewal. Again, one of the questions that we keep coming back to as the vestry is how do we help alleviate suffering in this time? And this is one way to do that. So please share this opportunity to support this with your family and your friends and your co-workers. This is a great Christmas gift if you don't want to go out and go shopping. And last but not least, Happy Thanksgiving. I hope we all have time to give thanks for those moments of joy in our life, even in the midst of 2020. Please wear a mask. Please stay home if you're able to stay home. And please also remember those friends, those family members who may be following the governor's guidelines, following the commandment to love, and staying home this Thanksgiving Give them a phone call, pick up the phone, FaceTime them, have coffee over Zoom, but do something so that we remember that even, even in this time of distance, we are still together in love, together for joy, and together in God. Happy Thanksgiving, happy Christ the King, and happy Bishop's visit. <laughs> we also give thanks this Sunday, so we have two really amazing birthdays, Pat Evans, celebrated her birthday this week, and Jean Owens celebrated her 90th birthday this week. And so we are very glad for the witness of these two women who are strong in faith and commitment to the community of St. Michael's and the commitment to prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator, creator and sustainer of all life, bless, preserve, and guide your children, children as they mark another year of life in you. Make their hearts ready to receive your love and free to love others, granting grace to grow into the fullness of Christ. Strengthen them, give them joy, and awaken them every day to the power of your saving help. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us come together in the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all of our understandings, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.